56 men signed the Declaration of Independence. 56 men signed a document guaranteeing our right to pursue our happiness. What sort of men were these? 24 were judges and lawyers. Nine were farmers and plantation owners. 11 were merchants. The remaining 12 were doctors, ministers, and politicians. Well-educated men of means, knowing full well that signing such a document would mean certain death if captured. These 56 men sacrificed everything to ensure our freedom. Five were tortured and subsequently died. Twelve had their homes ransacked and burned. Nine died fighting the Revolutionary War. Signer and New York delegate Francis Lewis was born in Wales, the only child of a clergyman and orphaned at an early age. His signature proved costly indeed. Francis Lewis saw his home plundered and properties destroyed. The enemy incarcerated his wife, and she died months later. Signer Carter Braxton, born in Virginia, invested much of his wealth as a successful planter and trader into the revolutionary cause. The British destroyed his private fleet as well as a number of his plantations. After selling his home and remaining possessions to pay his debts, Carter Braxton died in rags. The signers of the Declaration of Independence were men of courage. Men such as signer Thomas McKean, born in Pennsylvania in 1734. Continually hounded by enemy pursuers, Thomas was forced to move his family on a constant basis. He served in Congress without pay. His reward? A family kept in hiding. His possessions taken away. A life in abject poverty. Signer John Hart was a highly successful New Jersey farmer. He served as a Justice of the Peace and a member of the New Jersey Assembly. Later, John Hart became a delegate to the Continental Congress. After being driven from his dying wife's bedside, his 13 children having fled for their lives, John Hart lived in the woods and forest caves for over a year. He returned home only to find his wife dead and his children vanished. Weeks later, John Hart died from exhaustion and a broken spirit. Signers Philip Livingston and Lewis Morris experienced similar fates. And then there's the remarkable story of signer Thomas Nelson, Jr. Thomas Nelson, Jr. lived his life before the war as a Virginia planter, soldier, and statesman. His home was abruptly taken by British General Cornwallis for use as headquarters during the Battle of Yorktown. Governor Nelson became incensed as American guns would not engage. Why do you spare my home, he decried. Their response, sir, out of respect for you. Frustrated, Nelson demanded, give me the cannon, then proceeded to destroy the palatial residence himself. Yet this was not the end of his heroic sacrifice. Nelson raised two million dollars, pledging his own estates to support the revolutionary cause. His property was forfeited when a peacetime Congress refused to honor that debt. Thomas Nelson Jr. died a few years later, bankrupt at age 50. Thomas Nelson Jr. wasn't alone as soldiers and vandals ransacked and pilfered the homes of signers Clymer, Ellery, Gwinnett, Hall, Hayward, Middleton, Rutledge, and Walton. So let us honor the unparalleled sacrifices of these 56 men and thank them.